Nice fancy shirt there, Emily. All my less fancy Cute. shirts are dirty now. <laughs> <laughs> Start putting on the fancy shirts when I get near the end of my laundry. <laughs> You'll know the days that I have like foundation board meetings and stuff like that because I'll have a collar on. <laughs> this dock. Don't forget to sign in, everybody. Uh, I guess we'll get started it's after five after. Uh, standing item, new faces. I recognize all of these faces, so nothing there. And the plan merging RFC, so I'll kick it over to four. I assume you said you just kick it over to me. It lagged out a little bit for me. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me share my screen. Let me pull up a readable real quick and share my screen. Um, awesome. So um, this uh, RFC is aimed around uh, taking, I guess, solidifying the format for the build plan and build pack plan and with a solidified format, uh, using that to our advantage uh, to allow the life cycle to do some work that is uh, very prevalent in kind of toil for build packs and build pack author libraries, I guess is what the aim of this was. Um, this emerged from how we were trying to pass, uh, communicate what in which uh, images uh, dependencies should be available. Um, so right now uh, we have like a current state of the world. We just put a flag called build or launch in uh, our metadata for our build plan toml. And then we read that on the other side during build and we assign that to layers after the fact. Um, so uh, we really wanted a way of maybe doing that more expressly and more thoughtfully through the actual interface itself. Um, and uh, 
then it uh, got a little out of control, I'm not going to lie, and uh, we've ended up with what you see here. Um, so I can do like a quick walkthrough of uh, what these sort of mean and what I'm trying, what we're aiming to do here. Um, I think that that's probably a fair idea. So provides looks generally the same, except that we've added another field, which is a strategy version. And then we have a flag called collect now, um, which will become relevant once we get to the build pack plan side. Um, requires, uh, still has the name as the top level key, um, but we have split out any subsequent fields after that into their own sort of field. So version has a constraint field and a source field. Uh, the source field is important for what we're going to be proposing for the build pack plan, which is to merge all of the version constraints together. And if there is a failure during that merge, which happens at the very end of the detect phase, that will cause a failure in detect. And we will be able to uh, surface what the source of that failing constraint was. Um, capabilities, which is meant to be a map of uh, strings to booleans. And this will be, um, we'll, we'll get into uh, this, but this will be in build pack plan, this will be uh, or merged together. So once one of these is set true, it's like a sticky bit. Once one of these is set true, then every subsequent thing will be set true after that. Uh, I just have build and launch in here as examples. This could be anything that would be a Boolean operator uh, for the build pack. Uh, and then we have requires, and this one is meant to be string to interface or string to arbitrary data. Um, uh, and this is meant to hold unique communication pieces between build packs. Um, so with this, I guess I'm hoping to sort of show that we've taken the sort of general metadata field, kept as I believe all of the same functionality, but split it up in such a way where there are now uh, reasons for these things to exist in those in, that, in this framework. Um, I then uh, talk about these keys and give a long explanation, but let me let me, let me switch to uh, build pack plan, um, which now has the same sort of array of entries, but they have been condensed such that this name is unique for each individual entry. So any given name, all of its uh, requires are condensed. Um, the constraint is now the merged constraint, uh, or it doesn't exist and it is part of this collection. And that's where that uh, strategy bit comes in. Um, we were not necessarily super confident that we could approach every single version merging strategy ever, um, but we wanted to get the most general cases, uh, you know, semver, uh, uh, aligned cases. So we can give you a constraint, but we also give you a bailout essentially down here where you can do it yourself. Um, then we have the or merged capabilities and then we have a last in when merged uh, modifier field. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much the crux of the whole thing. Um, I could get into more detail if you all have any questions. And I have some examples of what these look like below between an emerging and not merging strategy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know uh, if I have a whole lot more to say without uh, some questions about this. Um, speaking as someone who's like really just developing a familiarity with these concepts, I would love, personally, I would love if you went through the example, like the specific one. Sure. Um, so let's go through the merging example first. Uh, here we're using node um, as our example. Uh, so we have our provides be node, and then uh, we have our collect strategy to false. So this will default to false, so we will always try and merge um, first. So you have to intentionally go out of your way to set this to be true. And uh, it's worth pointing out that the provider is the only one that sets this as true. So the build pack that is providing the dependency is the one that is dictating the whether or not the versions are merged. Um, and the reason it's laid out like this is so that it can be potentially expandable in the future if we decide that we want to extend it to modifiers and capabilities and whatnot. Um, so then we have two requires fields. We see that this is uh, a constraint that we're pulling from a configuration file called build pack YAML. 
Um, and then this is a constraint that we're pulling from package.json. Um, uh, when it's coming from build pack YAML here, we just want the, we just have launch true and build is false because we only wanted a launch time and we're saying uh, whether or not this is the special edition because I needed a modifier key, I'm gonna be totally honest. Um, uh, similar look except for this is uh, build true over here as opposed to the build false previously and then special edition is no. Um, Sorry, could you say again what special edition means? This is just an arbitrary key that I picked oh, oh. for the example. Okay, uh, thanks. No, that's totally fair. Um, uh, so then when we look at the merge at the end, uh, we will get that there is one entry, there's one entry field with the name node that has a constraint. And this is, um, I, I don't know exactly what this merge will look like in terms of constraints. This is what I have for right now. And that is subject to change depending on the implementation that we choose. Um, we will see that both build and launch are true because we or merged the two capabilities fields previously and that special edition is set to no because it was the last one in in this case. Um, so that's the that's the merging example. Do you, anyone have any questions about the merging example before I move on to the non one? Just to confirm the whiteboard functionality of anybody being able to put any value in is gone now right like there's if and since i have basically as a, a build pack author no way to guarantee that people are putting values into modifiers that are unique from one another there's no way for me to ever see all of the ones that all of the other build packs requested uh as this rfc stands that is the case um i think that there's there are there are things that you could uh, expand on this, and I think the non-merging example might help with that scenario uh, in terms of being having more of a whiteboard and modifiers. Um, but that's definitely some places this could expand, and we left room for expansion for something like that. I don't know if that answered your question, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, so the- It does answer my question. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, the build plan in the next example looks identical except for the collect has been set to true this time. And this is provide strategy version collect true. Um, otherwise, all other fields are the same as the previous example. Um, so we now, when we get to our build plan, we will see that there is no uh, entries uh, version anymore. Um, because we are now doing a collection of what that would look like. So this is maybe where this would be expandable for if you wanted to have all of your modifiers collected, and then you could introspect on them or whatever. We could potentially uh, add like a provide strategy uh, modifiers collect, and then do the same thing with uh, modifiers down here, if that helps you. Um, but other than that, the uh, capabilities flags are still or merged and the special edition is still last in merged. What happens if there are multiple provides with the same name? Multiple provides with the same name. Right, oh, I see. Have, yeah. And there's like a conflicting strategy. Um, yeah. I actually don't know what that looks like in the actual life cycle itself when you do something like that. Um, is there like, what, what, what happens when you're doing multiple provides with the same name and then there's like a requirement meetup for them after that? If that makes sense. I don't actually know off the top of my head right now what happens when there are multiple provides with the same name. Like I think I remember that sort of a build pack can claim that it provided that thing and then maybe that metadata about the requirement isn't provided to a later build pack but i could just be making it up and have to double check i uh, think uh you can delete well in detect it's like for like only one needs to match right but then in at build time you basically provide the thing and then you can delete or whatever from that build plan right 
I, I don't know what would happen if there were two provides with alternating strategies uh, and how that would work. I, uh, maybe we should also or merge the collect flag as well, but I don't, I don't have, I haven't thought that through. Sorry, two provides coming from different build packs. Is that the question? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I guess like what happens if the collect is different. So right, right now, provides that come from different build packs. Yeah. Right now, it's it the first provide wins in the current mechanism, uh, and then if that provide opts out of actually providing by deleting its entries in the build plan, then everything gets sent to the second one. So like I think would. I would imagine it would work the same way it currently works, where it uses the strategy in the first provide for the first one. And if that opts out of, you know, actually doing the provide in the build plan, then it uses the strategy in the second provide when it conveys the information to the second one. So both, depending on which one it's consuming. But that's not any different than what we do right now. Starting with what I like about this, I don't I think it could be good to add a more structured schema to requires uh, and maybe limit the depth and arbitrariness of the data there. And then hopefully more consistent contracts between build packs can emerge from that. Because I think with a little bit more guidance and structure, things will just end up looking more similar and be limited in their complexity in a way that I think could be good for the ecosystem. Um, I'm not convinced that the life cycle should take on the job of merging because it seems like there's just such a broad range of things that could happen there. In a lot of ways, it seems like one of the, the major goals of merging is to provide the data to the build pack in a convenient format, but I'm not sure if I want to push formatting requests into the spec or into the life cycle. There's also the Sember validation if you're talking about collect, right? Yes, that they can all merge together, I guess. But does every, you know, thing that could be provided or required the way people would specify that can you actually, you know, come up with a strategy that we can apply that broadly everywhere. Um, I'm not sure about that. And then also, it's really just making sure the requires don't conflict with each other. There's no matching of a provides version constraint with the requires. And maybe there shouldn't be because a providing build back, you know, maybe you can provide two of something if there are two unmatching constraints. I'm just not sure all of this logic can be generalized for everybody i don't see it as a generalization i see it as a as an extra feature so by default you get your list of you know you get essentially what you get now with nicer structure right but the providing build pack whose job it is would be to parse all the versions anyways can opt in to have all of the sem if all of the if the providing build pack knows i only accept semver compliant versions and my job is to merge them together to find the one that, you know, matches all the constraints, then it can opt in to having the life cycle do exactly what it would do for it. And because that's a pattern that's shown up in so many build packs, I, I, it, it doesn't bother me that, you know, that's some logic we could move to the life cycle that given the providing build pack completely controls the application of the logic, it, it, I don't see a downside to it in terms of cleanliness in the API. So I think there is a bit of a... I want to push back on the use of the phrase, so many build packs there. I would much prefer us to be saying some build packs. I don't believe the even the majority of build packs currently in existence across all implementations uh, counts as uh, uses uh, Semver uh, resolution. That makes sense. I think that's fair. The... Also, I understand not wanting to write this logic per build pack but I don't know why that necessarily means the life cycle, like language bindings or an additional opinionated helper library that is used with an ecosystem that all does this. Seems like it can make a lot of sense. I think if you're trying to write a simple build pack that provides a dependency, right? Provides a different version, you know, a different subset of versions of node, whatever. 
um, having the logic in the life cycle makes it really easy to do that because you get, you know, regardless of other contracts, you get one number back and you know that that's, or a range back and you know that that's what you're supposed to install. Um, and it, again, it's purely additive. Build packs don't have to use this, right? They can, they can totally get that list and do the resolution themselves if they want to, and that's the default behavior. Uh, I, I, I that's think it's not actually true, is it? Yeah, like I think it's worth clarification Forrest gave me earlier was that actually we've lost behavior as it stands now. Well, the default behavior is you get the list right now, right? And you set collect equals true and then it combines them together for you. But the providing build pack has to set that in order to do the combination. That was my understanding. I actually, I actually think it's it's currently the reverse right now, I think. I think sure. a collection being true is is not the case where we merge, but we can we could we could easily swap that. Um, but I think what you're talking about was modifiers in particular, right? That uh, you can't necessarily, like you can't have colliding modifiers um, as it stands now. Would a, like a collection, not a collection of those, but like an, a list of those be sufficient to uh, like avert that in your eyes or would you need something else on top of that? Uh, yes, the collection that we are already handed today would be absolutely sufficient for that particular use case. Can you describe why you're not, because I think the issue is the versions in the collect mode, the versions get uh, become a list, but the modifiers don't become a list. They always get merged together. Can you give a use case for when you wouldn't want to merge the modifiers together? I have absolutely no control over any other build pack that's put in an order with me the keys that they choose to contribute uh, can be anything. Um, I believe there's a piece of text in this that says uh, they are, these values are expected to be unique and I have exactly zero enforcement of that particular requirement because I don't control all of the other build packs. The only reasonable expectation there is to be handed all of them and trying to a build pack specific semantic resolution of multiple values and hope for the only being one. Last wins is just not a viable option in a completely open ecosystem. I have no idea about order. We have no idea about who's asking. But you can't look up the build pack that says it's gonna, that says it requires the dependency anyways, right? Like, like the same thing applies when they're not merged together also. You have an arbitrary list of, you know, things and the build pack has to decide to pick some of them. And so, you know, what's, what, what, so what, so what's, an example, a concrete example of this today yeah. is um, the proc file build pack. It reads a proc file during detect because it can't guarantee that the proc file will exist when build actually happens, like compiling Go and removing the source code and a Go application would remove the proc file. So it adds, proc, it adds every entry in the proc file as metadata to the requirements. There is absolutely nothing stopping another build pack from adding another entry to proc file, right? Or to, uh, to a proc file request. Any build pack could do it at any time. And that should actually be combined, right? We should honor all of those, not just the last build pack's choice. So wouldn't that work really well with this? Any build pack could, could, could contribute any well, nope, because requires modifiers has one key in it and it's called process types. And that is an array of strings. Oh, I see what you're saying. You want to have a whole bunch of build packs that contribute. This, this means that you can't have a whole bunch of build packs that contribute disparate things that you want to uh, join together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, is there a reason, it's a little bit off topic. Is there a reason Procfile build pack uses the build plan for its process types? That seems... How do you contribute to yourself in the future? You write to launch tunnel. Not from detect, you don't. <laughs> yeah, but like, what, what's the use case for that? Uh, maybe it's something we can dig into later, but. The, the uh, proc file build pack is traditionally the last build pack to run. And so you can say, oh yeah, uh, I'm a proc file. And then you go to the Go build pack and the Go build pack removes everything in slash workspace. And then when the proc file build pack comes along later on, it says, okay, let me go read that proc file and find out what those commands were. They're all gone. Oh, it's so that the build pack can remove everything in the app directory between execution. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah as part of build from source. 
Java build packs to it, but the Java build from source uh, strategy does the same thing. Interesting. I guess you could also use as a way for other build packs to potentially contribute process types as defaults yeah, or something. Absolutely. Way. But, but, but I mean, they, they already have that. a mechanism. <laughs> yeah. But there are, there are other places. And like, this is my uh, overriding concern with this entire RFC is there are novel things that we cannot anticipate that will simply be closed down by the fact that we are making the build plan stricter than it currently is. Like um, it's not a matter of, oh, tell me the use case and we'll add some sort of functionality to the use case. The beauty of the whiteboard pattern, the reason it's in the Gang of Four book is it allows the most amazing flexibility, which is especially useful to a project that is as new as build packs. We have no idea how build packs are going to use the build plan today. And yet we are codifying behaviors that some small subset of build packs do do today. I don't know if the interface we have, I agree that we shouldn't make things too restrictive. I don't know if the interface we have today is the most ideal structure for accomplishing a you know, whiteboard that's easy to use and makes sense in the context of the thing. Um, if you could, so like, I forget what the structure looks like for the stuff besides version, but if you could create lists for the other things, if you could create lists for modifiers as well. Oh yeah, we well, have collection dot. If you could do that collection thing for modifiers and capabilities, would that make you feel better? It, I mean, it probably would for me. It doesn't make sense to actually merge these if you're going to collect, not collect them. Right, like, I guess like even in this example, like it's weird to me in either of those examples that if I require a special edition to be true, but it happens to come first, but last wins as the build path that's providing node, I'd net like, if I'm able to provide a special edition, I never know that that is the thing that people want. I wonder if we need to create a different system for arbitrary metadata across this then. It's like, the, the system is very much designed for I provide a thing and I require a thing. And those things are version things and the providing build pack provides one of them and others have a bunch of, and it feels like you're trying to cram a bunch of other use cases in that, which makes that system overly complex in a in generic structure. But, but I don't think we're trying to cram things in. The point of the build plan originally was to give a whiteboard, even before we switched to the, the declarative build plan, it was always supposed to be a whiteboard for arbitrary communication between build packs. That's its original inception of it. And a whiteboard pattern with zero structure allows exactly that. It's not cramming functionality into it. It's utilizing it for what it was designed for. And now what we're doing is tightening it down and claiming all those other use cases that we had are no longer valid. I would like to see some really concrete, because using it to create a different mechanism for build packs to provide process types that's not launch TOML so that a proc file doesn't get removed at the end seems very contrived to me. The I would like to see use cases outside of that that are about generic information being transferred ahead of time that can't be transferred at build time that aren't dependency resolution. I'm, you know, I don't. I want to. That's what's missing for me. Sorry, separate the two questions of like having more structure around the schema of a requires versus the merge. And I think Ben disagrees with both of those, but just to take them one at a time, the one I have, that I have problems with is merge because it removes information from the system, right? Like once you've merged stuff, you've lost information and there's nothing to stop build packs with the help of a library if they want from ignoring or merging that as they want later. But I don't know if I want to build into the contract sort of the removal of some of that information. Or like, yeah, yeah. I agree with that sentiment. Like, I, I think that an example potentially even for like capabilities is you can imagine a build pack having a dependency on node 
but only at build time. But you can imagine another build pack that wants it at launch and it needs it to run it. But if that happens to come first in the build pack order, you lose that information and aren't able to actually. No, the, the capabilities like are. Action. The capabilities are or merged. They're or merged pools. And so in that case, you would get it at both times. That's, that's the point. Right. You wouldn't, it wouldn't, if you put build false later, it wouldn't override build true earlier. You get both equal true. If that makes sense. Unless you meant something else. Sorry. <laughs> Like the, the purpose of the capabilities hash is that it it lets you it, it allows the lifecycle to express things that a bunch of build packs say, I need this, I need this, I need this, and then you get the sum of you know all of those capabilities being true. Do modifiers end up on the bomb? Uh, I think the whole thing, or yes, they do. I guess in the case that they're merged together, they would end up merged together. In the case they're collected, should we add a collect for modifiers, they would create separate entries for the lists. I guess for things like versions, I don't, in this way, I don't necessarily want the requires the merged version of that on the bottom at all. I want the thing that was actually installed, the specific version, right? But the build pack can refine that during the build phase because it has access to the build plan entry. That's what the build pack is now. I mean, it does seem like modifier is part of the require and it probably shouldn't be merged if you're choosing not to collect them all together, right? I guess what's the benefit of merging modifiers? if it's arbitrary data that you can't actually reason about as a life cycle. Uh, you know, an example is uh, there, there could be different configuration properties that are often disjoint sets about a particular dependency that get merged together. So, um, you know, node needs to be built with this flag. Node needs to be built with this other flag those could get merged together to node needs to be built with both these flags to satisfy all the requirements was the idea. Right. But I guess if I'm explicitly choosing to not want to merge things, like it seems like it is a pretty large assumption that you would also want to merge modifiers because you just can't make that assumption. But you, you could make it so that on the provider side, the build pack that's going to receive all these things chooses whether or not they get merged together. Like the merging can be optional and controlled by the provider side contract by the strategy. So we could we could still provide a disparate list of modifiers like we do for versions there. This is a common use case that Paketo has, is that why? Modifiers aren't a particularly common use case for us. Well, there's arbitrary. Yeah. Yeah, well, for, for non-Java build packs, it is not a particularly common use case. But other arbitrary metadata is common, especially for Java that's not versions, right? So modifiers attempts to preserve that field, but contractualize it. But it seems like then you wouldn't use the merging functionality part of that. You would want to keep them separate. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess like if you want that merge, like it seems like you have collect equals true. 
uh, and it just like merge all the things, uh, merge the constraints, merge the modifiers. But if you're opting to like, I want things disparate and separate, it seems like I would also potentially want modifiers to be separate too. And I want to be able to associate what modifiers come from what constraint in what source. That makes sense. And then give like basically that flexibility to the build pack to decide what they want to do. Like they could merge the modifiers together themselves. If they want to do that, they could kind of leave that choice up to the user. I, I, I like that idea. I, I still think that having an opt-in way for the life cycle to do some verb merging, merging together that's optional and it's controlled by the provider side build pack, as long as it's opt-in, I want to try to break this down into little pieces. The, d does anybody disagree that that should exist in the life cycle at all, as even if it's an opt-in thing on the provider side? I'm not sure the compelling reason to put it into the life cycle when it can be accomplished with a library on a build pack uh, that a build pack opts in to use. Even if it means that you couldn't, it prevents you from writing a simple build pack in bash that, uh, you know, would provide a dependency because you'd have to find a library somewhere and include that library in your build pack, compile a binary that does it, you know, that, you think I it's, feel like once you're semver is a really bad example for this because what I mean you're not going to be parsing a sem a concatenated semver string in bash either and attempting to resolve it without some sort of library. I think most of the very simple bash build packs don't wouldn't don't be build plan. Yeah, <laughs> they could. They would just have to toggle parse the resulting. You'd have to use something like. YJ, to YJ. Out of Tommel, and then you have a version that's pre-resolved for you and stick that into your... I feel like it's, it's not sort pre-resolved of... for you. It's concatenated for you, right? The examples that you see down there that involve commas and stars, right? Like you're going to resolve that in Bash, really? Can you scroll down and show that part? I also feel like the life cycle's responsibilities are pretty constrained right now. And if the life cycle does this, it's like bleeding into the build packs logic. Like what version do you want to install based on these requirements, stuff like that. Um, and I feel like it will end up like having spent a lot of time thinking about API versions recently. I feel like if we do this merge for things like this, this is going to be an area of the spec that will continue to change because there's going to be more requirements for different merging strategies and edge cases that like, I'm not sure the life cycle should be getting into that business in a way that drives a lot of spec changes. Well, it's only for detect that functionality happens, right? For the, the actual like, like, I guess before it's just merging stuff, but um, it provides you a string. Uh, but the only like actually actual logic functionalities there have been detect, uh, if I'm remembering the RFC correctly. So that is being able to like fail out early, I guess, and detect and not have to go through build. Is that right, Steven? Or Forrest? Yeah, that's the, uh, this was the general idea that being able to bail out earlier during the merge, if you can sense that there is a conflict, not having to hit build at all. I imagine that the result of that merge wouldn't look like tilde 10 comma 10 19 1, but would just look like 10 19 1, because if something requested 10 19 1, it would merge those together into one thing. And what yeah. happens if you end up with two ranges? Right, somebody needs between one and two, and one somebody needs between one and a half and two. Uh, it, it, it generates, the result is always exactly two version numbers, a minimum and a maximum version number. And if there are if two different requirements specify ranges that conflict, then it fails, right? Like, I feel like in some ways that gets down to the specific dependency, right? Like if I'm saying I want between, 
one, seven, and two. It really depends on whether one, eight exists or not, whether that is a valid constraint. Yeah. You know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. The point of constraints is they're literally constraints. They cannot be resolved without an understanding of all of the possible options available to it, right? So this, the way Semver has traditionally handled this is it concatenates them with a bunch of commas and then you use something with that additional context to figure out what satisfies this entire collection of constraints and make your decision from there. But the life cycle inherently can never do that second bit. The best they can do is concatenate all of the uh, constraints together because these aren't version numbers, right? These are all version constraints realistically. Uh, and only a build pack can actually resolve a version constraint. Well, there's like two cases where it can fail, right? The version doesn't actually exist, right? Or uh, there is no possible valid version, uh, regardless of what exists in the world, right? And it can only do that latter, but not the former. Correct. Uh, it's like if you had something that's like, I need something greater than version eight, but less than version seven or something, there's like, no. Sure. And in, and no in neither of those cases. Yeah. And in yeah. neither of those cases, other than a someone contributing a constraint with an absolute value on it, not a range, under no circumstances can it ever be resolved to an absolute value. I'd almost be more okay with like, uh, if we really wanted to fail early and detect, like if that was the primary goal rather than convenience of consuming data, I must be better served by another hook into the build pack to be like, here is what we got. Can you do this before you get into building things rather than having the life cycle do a small slice of that logic upfront, but a lot of it gets left to the build pack. More complexity. <laughs> I don't know if it, it's yeah, worth it I feel point. like I am. I don't know if I want that hook. Um, I'm not sure I want it either. I think I'm okay with it failing during build when these things don't work. Is my general point. But if we really weren't okay with that, I'm not sure if I want. I'm not sure if I think the life cycle doing this one thing is the solution to that. All right. Let's let's put the merging of the versions to the side for a second and go back to the structure because I think. That might be something that we can, or like, there might be more constructive things about that because we have that the original need that drove this out is the build and launch flags are really weird. There's all this logic and build packs to merge together, build and launch flags from all the metadata. Uh, and it's, it's really, you know, it's commonly used. And before, a, a big argument against contractualizing those is it would be contractualizing them for no reason. The build pack would still have to read those values and then set them somewhere else, which is very weird. Ben made a good point that that doesn't make sense, right? Um, but now we have a, a different use case has come up around this, which is we want to be able to exclude all of the build specific uh, stuff that's not for launch from the build plan in the image because otherwise we, end, we don't end up with reproducible images. The build tools, even if they have nothing to do with the image that gets generated in the end, even if they're like, something that's supportive of the build pack doing you know, doing processing. Um, those build tools end up in the build materials now and make the images not reproducible. So does that requirement then mean that like we don't need the maybe the merging stuff is too controversial or we have to rethink what that looks like, but we should still have something like capabilities with build and launch as special flags that are that mean or, or at least something like capabilities and an exclude, uh, you know, capability that removes something from the build build materials at the end because we have to do that somehow. We can't just dump all the build time stuff in the build materials anymore. Uh, if so, are you saying? Because I don't know if this is this this is not laid out in this RFC, but I assume you're applying if like it ends up saying like build is true but launch is false in capabilities, and that gets past the build pack. Is the build pack responsible for moving that from the build plan, or does that is this proposing that that automatically gets removed? By this, I mean the thing you just said, and not what's in the RFC. Um, currently, if one build pack says launch equals true, build equals false, and require, and another build pack on a similar require says launch equals false, build equals true, 
right? No, no, no. Like if the resulting thing you get at the end for the capabilities says build is true, but launch is false, like after you resolved everything, um, when it comes to the build pack and the build pack, is the build pack expected to remove that to not be in the build plan? Or are you proposing that because it isn't in the launch image, we don't want it in the build plan and that's a capability we want the lifecycle to handle? Um, if the, Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. If the, if the providing build pack removes it from its build materials entry, then it pushes it to the next build pack, or I think maybe fails if there is no next build pack. So it's impossible to remove the build equals true entry and end up with a reproducible thing. It could try to remove the version number of it, <laughs> um, but the, the feature where you can push it to the next build pack conflicts with the idea that you could remove it from the build plan uh, in order to improve reproducibility. There, I think there needs to be something where it stays in the build, build of materials, but we, we know that this entry shouldn't be added to the image metadata. It should go into report toml or some other, you know, non-related to the image thing. Um, and capabilities in this case would help solve that and accomplish the merging the bools together automatically so that, you know, you, you know when you're looking through the entries what you need to install. We could just, I mean, the simplest thing we could do is hoist build and launch to the top along with the current version uh, and make them special. And then, but again, it does feel a little weird because they don't actually control the build and launch. <laughs> build pack still has to write those delayer metadata. What they really control is whether or not they end up in the build materials. And you couldn't have a exclude flag at the top or something because you don't know if somebody else is going to map something at the build. So there's like a real problem there that we talked about wanting to solve using a mechanism like this. Is it actually that weird if you hoist them to the top? Like, I guess like kind of independent of this RFC? Like you're basically saying I require this thing to be on a build layer or a launch layer. I guess like Part of the thing is you're making assumptions about layers where the dependency may or may not turn into a layer or not, I guess, right? Yeah, because the key thing about a bill of materials is you do not have to contribute a layer dependency or anything to contribute to the bill of materials, right? It doesn't even have to have ever been in the build plan to get into the bill of materials. we conventionally put information about dependencies that we contribute into the bill of materials, but you can put an empty thing in, right? You can contribute a dependency, you can contribute a layer and just empty uh, for your bill of materials entry. So it seems I like- I guess there's some notion that this package exists somewhere as a either build or launch, whether it represents an entire layer or not, right? Like I could have a layer that is node plus all of its NPM modules as one layer, for instance, right? Um, but it either needs to be used at build or launch time or both or neither. Hmm. So it seems like it would be a generic mechanism that's not related to build or launch that lets you remove an entry from the build plan at the end it would solve the other problem. Crazy thought. Do we just want to be decoupling the build plan from the build materials now that we've found these complications where they're not the same thing? Like maybe you would also, you'd end up with more build packs writing a bill of materials if it wasn't sort of this back door in the plan, but was an explicit output of a bill pack. Yeah, just have a separate, we could add another arg, but <laughs> have a separate output file for the bill of materials entries that doesn't look like the build plan and then require build packs to parse that and write separate metadata for it. Build packs that like this can just copy the build plan into the bill of materials like it doesn't stop you from just taking the shortcut. 
Yeah, and I think for a lot of things, like the fact that we put our dependency metadata into the build plan on the way out, well, really into the build pack plan on the way back out, we just put it into a different place. Like that's already a from scratch or from whole cloth contribution to the build plan. None of none of that data existed on the input into a build pack. Okay, so, yeah. so go ahead. I mean, I, I think that's a worthwhile, interesting discussion we should have, but is maybe somewhat unrelated to at least the RFC. We should maybe get back to this particular RFC. What I like about a little bit more structure is the way we have things currently. I could very easily, like we have build and launch flags at the top level in metadata. I could see an equally reasonable person saying under metadata, I have a field called a uh, table called layer flags. And that's where I put my build and launch by convention. So what I like is sort of flattening things out a little bit so that people doing the same thing are more, more likely to look the same. One thing I like, I agree with that. And one thing I don't like about the current like the way we have things laid out is on the providing side, you receive a list of objects and they repeat the same like names, sometimes out of order, right? And you have to find all the things that have the same name and merge those together. At the very least, the lifecycle could grab all the things that are called node and put those in a list for you, right? It feels very clunky that we don't at least do that. And this that's something that this, this RFC does suggest maybe in a way that's too strict, right? But, you know. I mean, the you could have, more structure. I mean, you could just have in like the build plan, plan Tommel, um, if you don't touch the build plan, uh, I guess Tommel structure is like the thing provided to the build pack could be like, Entries dot node and that like then has all the stuff in there. I guess potentially that's harder to parse because then you have to like iterate through all those things, but something like that though. One object that has name equals node and then a list inside of it of the values. I mean, the difficulty I guess right now is that if I see, I have to like iterate through the list to find the node right now. Is that correct? Because it's an array. Yeah, you have to iterate through the list and find all the things that have name equal node and collect those together. All right, you're saying that with a map, you could just look it up. You could marshal the data in and then look it up by the name. We've, we've tended, tended to avoid key names that are arbitrary because Tom will. Yeah. I mean, even in the, even in the non-merge example, right? If you scroll down, um, you could still have a single entry for node with name equals node that pulls all the stuff together like yeah. in one place, right? And I think that would probably even make that experience better. That, that's a change I'd like to see. For sure. Well, I guess there's some things to look over for this. Uh, sweet. I'll take a look and see if I can uh, come back with something a little bit maybe simpler. Um, we'll see how it goes. I guess, uh, I guess like for Emily and Ben, uh, I'm still unclear like what an actionable thing you would want on this RFC. Are you like a hard no? Do you want changes to it? Like how do I'm you a hard no. Force go back? My, okay. my, uh, my actionable output of this is close with a do not merge disposition. But 
would you be a no to any change to the build plan whatsoever, including just structural changes to clean up the current thing? Like, like you, you don't even like the version at the top we have right now, right? Yep. Yeah, the the structural changes, I believe, uh, and I commented just before this meeting. Uh, in fact, not only uh, do they not take into account my concerns from the previous incarnation of this about promoting things to top levels, uh, they go in exactly the opposite direction. And instead of suggesting that we promote two, build and launch, now we're going to promote three of them. So I believe this has gone 180 degrees from my preference for this change. I'm asking, would you be opposed to any structural changes, not the specific structural changes put forth in this RFC? Because I know you don't like version as a special field, for instance, right? If we proposed making that not a special field, I assume you wouldn't be opposed to that, right? No, I wouldn't be. And in fact, uh, there is a uh, draft PR in one of my repos to suggest exactly that. So uh, I think you, I actually even offer that as the alternative which is completely demote everything. So w would you be opposed to structure that just collected things with a similar name into individual entries so that you didn't have to iterate through a list and find all the things that matched and recreate the structure yourself? And that's for build pack plan, not the build plan, right? Right. I don't understand that suggestion so so right now the build pack receives a flat list of objects uh kind of out of order some of which may have matching names and some of which don't and a build pack has to filter that list into things with similar names like has to go through and say okay this one's node and this one down here is node and this one over here is node and those are the ones that need to merge together one thing i really like about this this rfc is that it takes all the things called node for you and creates a single entry for those uh putting aside merging anything together there right would you be opposed to a structural change in it along with the removing the version from the top level that just collects the things with the similar names into a list for you yeah i thought we had that at some iteration of this the plan was there would be a single entry for node and then entries metadata would effectively be a list of maps Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the yeah. change. Yeah. Like that, I can totally, like, that feels right to me. I understand the, the compelling reason because a build pack is typically looking for one particular key or is looking for a coalesce data about a particular key. Yeah. Awesome. Those, those two things make me feel a lot better about the current build plan and are things I was happy about in this RFC, if that makes sense. So I wanted to clarify. <laughs> um, the last thing is, uh, do we, do we feel like solving the problem of accidentally putting build time metadata in the current bill of materials? Does anybody disagree that we should solve that problem? Um, the solution could be a different RFC that proposes a different mechanism for specifying bill of materials information versus build plan. But do, do people feel like it's important to include that build time information in the image metadata or, or anything like that? Is there opposition to trying to solve that problem? No, and in fact, I absolutely endorse trying to solve that problem. That's clearly an issue that our customers are complaining about today and should be solved. Got it. Okay. So, Forrest, is that is that a little more concrete? <laughs> That's you know, feedback. Trying to get more concrete feedback. Um, yeah. Cool. I, I, I still, for what it's worth, I still like the idea of the life cycle doing more to help do version resolution because we created a resolver and it feels like it could can use could do something to um make it easier for build pack authors there but um, i totally understand that that's controversial or like i i'm not suggesting that my perspective is right uh, i think okay we're, anything yeah. else let's go ahead and finish this meeting up all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.